Hello, I am Daniel Dodges, engineer, general contractor, and impartial consultant in building structures. Today I want to talk to you about the theme Building Structure Inspections. To better understand, I have categorized eight types of building structure inspections one finds most frequently. I mean eight situations in which it is recommended to call on a structural engineer or a building inspector. The first inspection is the general inspection. In order to check the general condition of the building and eventual anomalies. So not just the structure, but the entire building. Ventilation of the roof, electricity, plumbing, so various aspects and of course the structure, but not in deep. It's an inspection which is not necessarily done by an engineer, but by a building inspector. It is recommended to call upon a certified inspector. During this inspection, it is possible that structural anomalies may be detected. Foundation cracks, cracks in the walls, the ceiling, floor slopes, beams and handcraft columns, cut roof trusses, non-conforming house extension, etc. It is only thereafter that an engineer is called upon to decide on specific points of structural anomalies. The other seven types of inspection require an engineer specialized in building structure. Which brings me to discuss the other type of inspection, which is the inspection addressed two specific problems that have already been identified. Whether it is before the sale or purchase of a building, for prevention or to resolve problems. This following a general inspection when very specific structural anomalies have already been detected, like cracks, sloping floors or other problems. The engineer does an inspection which can be described as addressed because we already know the anomalies. What does the engineer exactly do during these inspections? First of all, observe the problems on uh, the spot by collecting information from clients, documents, etc. Secondly, analyze the information by putting safety first and by determining the seriousness which is very often based on the experience of the engineer because many situations are not foreseeable given that there are too many structural unknowns. And for and thirdly, recommend in a reasonable and balanced manner the measures to be taken to resolve or prevent damage as much as possible but without guarantees. When I talk about making recommendations without any guarantee, I do that because there is a limitation on the scope of the engineer inspection of an existing building. It should be understood, however, that although an engineer with knowledge and experience is called upon, there are limitations on the scope of the inspection by an engineer. This is, of course, in relation to the expectation of the client. By the way, it is important that the engineer before the inspection informs the client of the scope of his inspection so as not to disappoint him concerning his expectation. So in the presence of an existing building, several elements of which are unknown, without having participated in the design of the building, without having attended the construction, without structural plan as built, without being able to see clearly through the ground, the floors, the walls and the ceiling. So because the inspection of the engineer is often limited only to what is visible and accessible, he often cannot say anything of substance on when the problem did occur or begin, the obvious cause of the problem, the stability to know if it will progress and at what pace. Therefore, the engineer can often only make recommendations on reasonable and balanced progressive means of action in order to firstly guarantee security for the public and secondly to propose corrective measures without guarantees on performance by recommending to monitor the problem in the future. 
So, for instance, if customers are alarmed by cracks, sloping floors, or anything else, the engineer will collect as much information as possible on site and from the clients, and then will inform them of the reasonable measures to be taken without necessarily guaranteeing their effectiveness, mentioning that it will often be necessary to monitor the situation in the future and it is possible that other measures of action may be necessary in the future, taking into account the performance expectations of the clients. So do not expect an engineer with a minimum of information to arrive with a crystal ball to see the past and the future and to answer all your doubts with guarantees. There is no way to clearly know the general appearance of the structure behind the walls and ceiling without often opening large sections and even in this situation, there are no guarantees, meaning that the goal of the inspection is not to guarantee the resolution of a problem, but only to assess its seriousness and which works are to be considered in the short, medium, and long terms. Therefore, the inspection intervention by the impartial engineer for an existing building is more aimed at ensuring safety first, knowing if the work is worth it and what it will involve, as a client not to be accused of hidden defects and demonstrate one's good faith, to be reassured or better informed in a balanced manner without panicking at the slightest anomalies up to a certain extent while knowing that there are limitations in the inspection of the engineer of an existing building. Which brings me to speak about the third type of inspection, the structural inspection history, to document the building notebook. So it is a question of monitoring, observing, documenting in a building notebook by an expert impartial engineer all the events or action taken on the structure during the life of the building. Too often, buyers or sellers wait only until the time of the transaction to bring in an engineer who has not followed up during the life of the building and who has little official impartial information about the building. It is preferable to gradually document over the years a building notebook with an impartial expert, like a medical record. This will serve as much for buying, selling, to prevent hidden defects as to make the right corrective decision and to plan budgets. So regularly, an engineer does a structural inspection history, whether it would be periodical inspection every few years or when there is work done on the building or when there are obvious visible anomalies. A fourth type of inspection is the project feasibility inspection. Be it for an extension, the addition of a floor, removing a wall, making an attic habitable, or even to construct a new building by inspecting the land and the plans. The engineer will look at the existing structure as well as the proposed architectural plan if they exist, and he will make a structural recommendation. The engineer may mention that beams, columns, or other structural elements not forecast by the client and his technologist or architect are necessary. An engineer who is contact in time at the very beginning can better guide the clients for the design of complete plans for the construction permit and the inspection during the works. That is why the structural feasibility inspection by an engineer is very important before starting the design of architectural plans. I have encountered situations in which clients had made complete architectural plans without first contacting an engineer, and when the engineer intervened, a large part of the architectural plan had to be redone, resulting in significant additional costs. So, for an existing building that you wish to modify, you should always first contact an engineer to see the structural feasibility before starting any architectural or design plans involving the removal of walls, the opening in the foundation, the extension of the building, or other structural work. 
The fifth type of inspection is the compliance inspection for already completed work. Often clients call me as an engineer because they have completed work in the past and they suddenly received a notice from the municipality, the request from a community of condos, a requirement for insurance or mortgage renewal, or the request of a future buyer. This in order to inspect work they have already done, such as removing a wall, building an extension, adding a floor, correcting a floor, pouring a concrete slab, repairing or modifying roof trusses, repairing cracks, etc. And they want a letter of compliance. You should know that it is often very difficult to satisfy this type of request without having attended the work and without having access to the entire structure. The engineer cannot simply inspect using photos provided by clients in the past or trust the plans and specifications because often the as-built does not respect the plans. It is often necessary to expose the structure to attest to its conformity. Which brings me to the sixth type of inspection by an engineer, the compliance inspection for work in progress. A distinction must be made between conception conformity and work conformity. Providing plans and specification by an engineer does not mean that the work is necessarily done in conformity. So it is better first to have the design checked plan and specification by an engineer, second to constantly monitor the work again by an engineer, and third to produce a letter of compliance at the end of the work also by an engineer. This way the engineer will assist with the work similar to construction site supervision during important moments such as before pouring the concrete to check the metal reinforcement inside the concrete and the formwork, before backfilling to verify the foundation, check the drain, before closing the walls to see the structure, and other points to make recommendations if necessary and knowingly produce a letter of compliance at the end of the work. So it is important that there is coordination between the contractor and the engineer so that the engineer is present at certain stages of the construction process. Hence, the importance of advising the engineer before starting the work. If the engineer does not do an inspection during the work, he will not be held responsible unless the client can prove that the structure has built at this moment hidden behind the partitions once the work is completed actually corresponds to the plans and the engineer's specifications. Hence, the importance of having work monitoring and a letter of compliance to ensure quality compliance with plans and specification and to commit the responsibility of the engineer. It is very common to see clients or contractors not following the instruction of the engineer by forgetfulness, negligence, lack of understanding, improvisation, or by doing their thing according to their whims, sudden fancy, or impulse. If, in addition, clients try to save money without hiring a construction site inspection engineer, then major structural errors may be made, not corrected in time, and the engineer will not be responsible. So it is very important to have an engineer to monitor the work with a letter of compliance at the end of the work. The seventh type of inspection is the inspection of facade and parking lots by an engineer. According to Bill 122 in Quebec, for buildings of five floors or more, it is mandatory to carry out inspection of façade and multi-story parking lots. For more information, visit one of my website, inspectionfacade.com. Also note that since several old buildings of less than five floors have non-visible masonry problem, and before the appearance of a bulging uh, brick walls, it is better to still proceed with uh, the inspection of masonry facade periodically by an engineer even for buildings of less than five floors. I have already known situation in which a very old duplex or triplex uh, building of less than five floors with dangerous situation of large uh, bulging bricks or board walls were not covered by their insurance because the owner were accused of being negligent for not having contact 
in the past an engineer for a regular preventive inspection. So investing a small budget in a regular inspection by an engineer is secure and profitable. Finally, the eighth type of inspection is the structural emergency inspection. Where the engineer is called urgently following an accident on the building, the intervention of the firefighters, a notice from the municipality or other. The engineer is then asked to decide on the security perimeter, the need to evacuate the building, the corrective measure to be taken in the short, medium, and long term by considering the security of the public, the regulation of the municipality, the client's budgets, and so on. It is therefore important to have a structural engineer among your contacts who can be available quickly in an emergency, especially if you have several older buildings as a real estate investor. This was my presentation on the eight types of building structure inspections. You can see many of these videos and informative articles on my website, dargisconstruction.com, as well as on engineerstructurebatiment.com. Also on Facebook, Construction Daniel Darges, and on YouTube, while searching for Daniel Darges Engineer. Do not hesitate to contact me to inspect the structure of your buildings. I am Daniel Dodges, engineer, general contractor, CCQ journeyman, master carpenter, and impartial expert in building structure inspection since 1989. Thank you, and see you next time.